Adding a part to inventory. This will be a review of the details included in an inventory record. We'll walk through the basics and then discuss inventory concepts. Click on Add to open the entry screen with the cursor in the Part Number field. Our task now is to enter a new battery. Type in a part number up to 20 characters. Part code is an abbreviation system as explained in Setup Standard Descriptions. Next, enter an appropriate description for this part. The Size field is intended for use with tires. Typically, the Manufacturer field is filled in by electronic parts ordering activity. On a manual entry like this, you may leave it blank or build your own codes and setup if it will not be ordered from an electronic parts catalog. Select a category from the list. This way, the sales of this part item will be grouped under the right category rather than unassigned. Account class and the taxable checkbox are defaulted to parts revenue taxable as assigned in your program setup, standard tables, account classes. Choose a different account only if an exception is required for this part record. Location is handy for finding items on the shelf and for inventory worksheets in the future. Those can be printed in part number, description, or location order, so be sure to enter location if it is known. The Attach Parts function will be explained in a separate video clip. Comment is provided for any notes such as order by the case, sold by the foot, or similar messages. The Tire checkbox is used to confirm which part records will be included in the tire package search results. Sale of this part can pay a variable tech commission you may have established in Technician Setup, or you may exempt it by checking the No Commission checkbox. The Last Paid and Last Sold fields display no history yet, as this is a brand new record. The program builds average cost data over time. It does this indefinitely until on hand falls to zero or negative quantity. Then the process starts over once the on hand quantity is above zero once again. Total cost would display the actual dollar investment in this item, and total price is the potential to be collected on invoices based on your current sell price. Enter the quantity that is now in-house into the on-hand field. Do not enter anything in on-order as that will populate based on electronic parts orders. It alerts us that there is an existing purchase order in progress to replenish stock levels. Committed is self-generating and reflects the quantity of this part required to meet current shop order needs. Enter the part cost into the last cost field and press the tab key. This allows the matrix to calculate the selling price. You can overwrite this calculated price with a different price if desired by checking the user entered price box and entering a price into the sale price field. This sets and locks the selling price at the designated amount, protecting it from changing due to cost or pricing updates. A similar option is found in the Order Item Entry Parts window during an estimate or order. The difference here is changing a part record itself for all future sales instead of a one-time exception on an order. Since this part is our unique creation, list will be blank. Stocking level of each item is controlled with this value. The inventory system will always aim to have this number on hand. Reorder point serves as the trigger to make this item show up on a restocking purchase order as needed. In other words, how low will you let this item quantity get before you want the program to order some more back in to achieve that stocking level that you specified? Select OK and return to the inventory list screen with your new part added. Other inventory functions such as attached items, alternate sale, alternate parts, Sales, Core, Fee, Vendor, and Supersede are discussed in other video clips.